Well, we're on the third stop on our 2024 trapping journey. Uh, started in the southern tier of New York. Put a few coyotes in the traps up there. We used the Duke 450 and pretty happy with uh, how that performed up there. Um, held the coon by the front feet too, which I was happy with. Uh, went to the Adirondacks. Spent uh, three or four days with Eddie Dakin. But uh, <laughs> I like to call those beaver that are long and narrow and just like a hard rock. I call them torpedoes. I actually caught that torpedo beaver on that dam crossover. Uh, Eddie threw a couple bracelets on uh, a couple coyotes, a mink, gray fox. Made fun of me for the gray fox being my spirit animal, uh, as you know, or if you don't know. Uh, Gray Fox get a free pass with me. Um, this is my third stop. I'm back home. And it's where I cut my teeth. Going to a lot of places where I used to just follow my father. When we're going up. I'm going to go set the first farm. We have set it before. We have showed it. Uh, I've showed coyotes there. I've showed fox. I showed releasing Gray Fox raccoons, um, a lot of footage from my first DVDs, the Coonan video, the muskrat video, the mink video is up here on their property. Uh, over the years, uh, dad gradually just kind of started giving me more spots and, you know, dad passed away. So now I uh, carry his spirit through my sets. Um, I got his boots on again today, his muck boots. So he's gonna be out here trekking with me and I'm gonna put uh, some sets in. I'm getting a late start today, that's fine. I'm gonna be over here five to seven days probably, at least five. Uh, and I'm gonna change some things up. I normally would come here and put one set here, one set two, 300 yards down. I'm gonna continue to concentrate on putting three sets in one location. Uh, saw Brian Nelson do that. I guess he got it from Alan Claycomb back in the day, whenever. But uh, that triangle, three sets. 90% of the animals that I've caught on this property and I saw my father catch for over 40 years on this property are in this 150, basically 50 yard by 50 yard location. It's where everything comes together, all the features. The stream, the ditch, the crossover through where the two track is, the field edges, and that's where the animal traffic's gonna be. So I'm not going to uh, try and change the wheel. I'm gonna put my three sets there. If I get a coon or a possum in one, I'm gonna have two working sets. And I know that's exactly where those critters are gonna be. And it's been shown year after year after year where we catch them. Before we get there though, I'm gonna go set uh, uh, we've said it, I think I've showed it the last two, probably three years, the last three years for sure, because three years ago I showed where uh, my son caught his first raccoon and it was actually a double. So I'm going to set that first. Um, that's, a, that's a really funny uh, memory for me because my dad was just on fire that day with his jokes and we were trying to film and, and it was just, it was pretty funny. But that's where I'm going to start. And then I'm gonna come in and uh, kind of the location within the location here um, where 90% of the animals are caught and we're gonna get going through our day. But it's, it's nice to be back in the home territory. It's nice to have uh, some time to get over here and I'm not gonna rush and I'm gonna enjoy it. So we're gonna start putting sets in the ground here in about the next five minutes. There's a trail that goes in right here. Yeah, look at that trail. You can see that trail. Actually, there's Coon Scat right there going in there. So, and I got a big crick right here. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's a big crick right there. Um, these piles right here are gonna hold uh, raccoons. Actually, here's another trail right here. Look at that trail that goes in right there. So we're gonna get some DPs. And you can see in there under that uh, log structure, 
there's uh, corn cobs that are eating in there. And that in and of itself tells me something took them in there. And we're going to uh, most likely have some uh, action here. Here's another trail. You can see this right here. Now there's deer tracks on there, but this is actually probably more sign than I've ever seen here before. But you can see how that goes in there, down to that big creek. Everything's going to stay up in here. There's probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some coons or a possum or a skunk in there under that big wood pile right now. Um, so, I'm actually, look at that toilet up there on that uh, log. So, I, uh... I don't like to get my hopes up because trapping is trapping. It's just like hunting and fishing. You don't know if you're going to get something or not. But um, this little field edge right here and this cornfield, the big river, all those factors uh, play into keeping those critters, you know, basically hugged right in here. And we're going to throw... Uh, I'm going to put four DPs here. I'm going to put two right here on this trail, on this end of the log structure. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put two DPs right here. I'm going to actually, I'm not even going to set those trails over there. If they come out there, they're going to work their way over here. I'm going to hug this log structure and that trail right there is going to hold the two traps uh, for this location but ultimately uh I, I was actually kind of hoping he had corn in here because when you have corn and it's not even cut yet when you have corn you're gonna have the the critters as well and he wants some uh raccoons out of here he's like get as many as you can get so we're gonna give it the good college try we'll put two over there and two right here and i'll show you the finished sets uh Actually, you know what? I'll put it there. Just look at that pile of coon scat right there, fresh. Another pile of coon scat right there, fresh. You know what? As much sign as I'm seeing here, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna check, so I might as well put uh, I might as well put six in here. So I'm actually gonna put the camera on my uh, headband, and I'll do this uh, point of view to show you how quick and easy and efficient you can get uh these type of sets in so and this is all eaten there's a coon track quite a bit of sign so maybe we'll come back here tomorrow and have one all right we've got uh hammer stake driver magnet coon buster and our six traps so we're gonna go down here now Throw these six traps in. I'll show you uh, where I'm gonna put them. And you'll see how easy it is to really put a lot of these in. If you got, you know, I don't know, if you're a farmer or a rancher and you've got a lot of land um, and you wanna handle your nest raiders this is about as easy as you can do it with these dog proof traps so we'll take one here we're gonna put that right here and we'll pound that in that's there and then give it a pull good we'll get it set and you're just pulling that trigger back get it in the notch that's gonna go in the ground right there we don't need to do anything else yet. We'll just come out here. We're gonna take another one. One thing when you do set these, make sure that uh, you don't get it close enough to where the uh, coon can get to it if he gets caught, cause he will be in both of them. So get this one in. That works. Give it a tug, it's set. Same thing, just get that trigger down in the notch and put that right there. Perfect. 
grab our other traps, bring them over here. We're gonna do this trail right here. There, that's in. And then we're gonna bring one right to here, which is fine because if something's working its way down along that edge here and doesn't work this trail, we're gonna catch them right here. The only problem is if they decide to come in and cut this corn, I might have a trap that's maybe not gonna be working. That's good. That should hold. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hold. You can see that coon can't reach that other trap now. Just make sure you pay attention to that. You don't want to, to go in and have the same coon in the same trap. So I'm gonna put that in right there and then we'll take our last two down on the other side. That's a hell of a good trail there. Like I said, there's deer working that, but your raccoons are definitely gonna be in through there. The toilet's up there, it's fresh scat over there. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised there's a uh, coon living in there right now. That works. Pull that, that's set. And as you can see, these go in extremely fast. There's not much to putting them in the ground. Just staking them. We're gonna put our coon buster and magnet in them. And I fully expect if any raccoons come through here tonight, they're gonna be waiting for us tomorrow because they don't walk by that coon buster and magnet combination. They just don't. Ugh. That works. Get that trigger down in the notch. And right here in the middle of the trail, perfect. So we got those six pounding the ground and now we're just going to first take the magnet and a little trailing scent a little trailing scent a little trailing scent a little trailing scent and we'll go down here A little trailing scent and a little trailing scent and that's it and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our tablespoon out of our bag and put our coon buster down in there you can see that's a really colorful fare soaked in crawfish oil and that's all you need right there one tablespoon and that's going to go down in the cylinder i spilled about half of it so i'm going to put a little bit more right there and that's right at the trigger and the same thing on this one right at the trigger if i could hit the nozzle we'd be better off and i'm pretty much empty on that one so we'll grab a new one and we'll go down to these last two but you can see the colorful fare all the different ingredients soaked in crawfish oil they just don't walk by it they just don't walk by it and all right the trigger and we'll give them a little more that's all right, and then we'll get another one here. And that's pretty good. Good. 
and then we'll go get these last two. This one here. That was probably pretty good, but we'll just do a little more. And then this one here. And that's good. That's all we need. And you can see, it takes about five minutes. And I've got two there, two here on this trail, and two down here on the end. And this whole area right here, just uh, there's some good sign. We've got the corn. We've got the edge here that keeps them in. We've got the water that keeps them in. This is gonna be right here, an absolute funnel for not just the raccoons, but the coyotes, the fox, everything. Um, as the crow flies down here, not even a quarter of a mile is where I'm gonna have my coyote set. So I'm not gonna put any right here. I got a uh, place down there that I absolutely love that I'll talk about when we get there. Um, but the corn, the water, this, you know, logs and, you know, they've got everything here. They've got cover, they've got food, they've got water, and they've got safety. So find these locations, very prime, two, four, and six sets, and I'd be Extremely surprised if we come back here tomorrow and don't have at least one. Well, we're just down as the crow flies from where we just put those six DPs in. And this is the area that I usually uh, catch a lot of critters. You know, my dad, I can remember him catching tons of fox in here last year over the, about where the corn dispenser is there. Uh, I let that gray fox go. They've got a pile of scat here that they're spreading and I don't know if the camera can pick it up but down there is the guy uh, tilling and spreading so I'm actually not gonna set here today I'm gonna wait and come in here tomorrow I don't want to get in their way for one because they give me permission to be here and two I don't want uh, to put my traps in the ground and have them getting <laughs> run over by the tractor so but this is just ready made for some predator sets you've got that big attraction right there they come in here they're gonna walk around it they'll dig at it it's gonna attract every animal in the area they had one here last year or the year before and i showed bear tracks coyote tracks fox tracks raccoon tracks um it's so dry right now you can't see any tracks we haven't had any rain here in probably two months it's been a while it's 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 pretty dry actually there's a fire uh advisory you, you can't burn like even in in town there's there's no there's no burning outside so but this right here is another one of those situations though where you have this bigger waterway that's a natural barrier you've got basically 10 20 yards of thick stuff that's going to hold mice rabbits things like that you have the corn this year last year with soybeans those coyotes come down here to hunt you know they're up there on the mountain tops or up over the tops that's where they're living they're not living down here but they're coming down here to hunt you know pretty regularly so I love this spot. I've caught personally. Uh, you've seen video. Uh, there's clips going all the way back to, oh man, 2013. Well, actually, all the way back to 2003. That ditch just to the right of where the cut corn is, is where I caught five or six of the coons that are in my cooning video. So, I've been trapping here for almost five decades. Um, but we'll come back in here. We'll put uh, the triangle in there tomorrow somewhere right here And then I'm gonna I don't want to do it today. Like I said, I don't want them getting run over But down there this all comes to a point that Crosses over into that other field and then down a little thicker patch a little wider there on the right and that's a good funnel uh, for the 
coyotes, foxes, bobcats, whatever's running down here. I hope I don't catch any bobcats. They're not in season, but my luck, I'll end up snagging into one and have to let it go. But this is a good spot. It's a great location. We've showed you before, and we're gonna come back here and show you again. But we're gonna go down the way and uh, put some traps in where I know that the tractors aren't gonna cause me any issues. We'll come back in here tomorrow or the day after. Well, here's one of those spots that uh, I probably have not set a trap in in 20 years, 25 years. This bottom right here, where that swamp comes down through, uh, I caught my first muskrat over there. I caught my first mink down here at the bottom in a blind set where it goes under the culvert. I've caught fox over here and, um, you know, obviously farmland changes hands and changes ownership. And it was owned by somebody out of the area. We never had permission, so we never came in here. And I was on my on X and saw it was owned by somebody now that I actually went to high school with. And uh, I sent him a message on Facebook and I said, hey, you know, I'd like to go down there in the bottom and trek around and see if uh, I can catch a couple critters. And I wanted to see if you give me permission and pretty much texted me back immediately. He said, absolutely, go down there and do whatever you want. So I got permission here now and I'm gonna go down in there and put some uh, canine sets in. This is uh, another area where they're gonna run that bottom, work that swamp, looking for rabbits, mice, muskrats, you know, whatever's in there. And uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, that's where my dad took me and, and the old picture is it's in my catalog and, and uh, that we've shown before through some of our videos. That's right where I caught that muskrat through the ice when I was seven years old, right in that swamp. And I will go over there and show that as well. But we're gonna get out in there and make a few canine sets. And it's uh, definitely a bright spot to my day, bringing back those memories for sure. We're in here where I basically, uh, I don't know, cut my teeth almost 50 years ago. This is the swamp and there's not a lot of water in here. There used to be a tremendous amount of water in here. Um, but I caught that first muskrat on the ice about right there. And there was always, and I haven't gone up there yet, there was always a big hut in this uh, big bush right here. There was always a monster hut out in the middle of there. And I'm looking in there, I don't see anything. I'm gonna walk around here. I mean, there might be a muskrat or two in here, but there's no way I could have walked this the way I'm walking it right now back in the day. Well, there's a little bit of water. That actually looks like a little bit of a muskrat channel there, maybe. I don't know. It, uh, it's not near as much water as it used to be, but if you look up in there, there used to be a hut every year intertwined in those uh, big bush. And that bush wasn't near the size it is now, but you know, this used to be full of muskrats. I caught mink here. Um, well, you know, I caught my first muskrat here. I was seven years old. This holds uh, a pretty cool place in the history of my trapping experiences. And there is some water in here, but it's been a dry summer. And we just don't have muskrats the way we used to. I'm walking across here. I might fall in a channel if there's any in here, but it uh, doesn't look like it. Each one of these little areas here would have, you know, 
I'm like, oh, actually, there's a muskrat hut. That's what I'm talking about right there. You can see the muskrat hut in right. They build it right into the middle of the branches. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, but right here in the, you can see that that's tore up. There's a channel that goes right in. You can see where they're coming out on the, the hut, but there is a hut there. So that's pretty cool. There are some muskrats here. Nothing up there where it used to be. That was the big hut. I think it was like the half the size of a beaver hut back in the day, but not now. I'm gonna see if I can get closer to this rat hut to show you how they're coming up on it. Anyway, you can see the rat hut there built right into the uh, stuff. And you see where they've come up on it? They're definitely in there. So there is uh, some rat activity. That's kind of cool. I like it. Rat season comes. If I'm over this way, I'll uh, come down and maybe throw some in for old time's sake, but that's pretty neat. There's a little more water down here. There might be another hut over there. We'll go over there and check. But muskrats are extremely fun to trap. And as I said, back in the day, I wouldn't be allowed to walk through here like this. I'm going over where all this water is and see if there's a channel right here going up and down. Yeah, there's a little bit of activity. It doesn't look doesn't look too inviting, but all in all, pretty pretty neat. Pretty neat. But we're not trapping muskrats today. They're not even in season. And as we get down here, there is another hut over there. It's a little one. I'm gonna try and get there. I don't have my, I got my dad's, got my dad's mucks on. Tromping through the swamp. So I don't wanna go over them. I don't wanna have wet feet all day. But that is some muskrat activity. I don't think they're in it because the water went down. They might have started doing that in the spring. And you can see where they were working there. They aren't there now, obviously. The water is too low. But if you find places like that and still have water like this and you do have a muskrat population because there are rats working that hut over there, that's a tailor-made mink set right there. Right where it comes out, over there on the other side. Mink are gonna come in there, work around that, spend some time sniffing and rooting. And where you have muskrats, you're gonna most often times have mink. Cause they'll kill a mink. I went into a pond already. And you go into this, you know, farm pond or whatever, and you got three or four really good channels. You're like, man, I'm gonna mash the rats here. I'm gonna hammer them. You put three or four sets in and you go back the next day and you don't have anything. Empty traps. And you're like, what the hell's going on? Cause you can tell they're being used. Then you go back the next day and you have a big male buck mink going in one of the holes in your 110. That's why there ain't no rats there. He went back there and killed them all and ate them. <laughs> but, this is awesome. I don't, you know, really quite honestly, I don't give two shits if I catch anything. I've, I've had my fill of uh, memories here in the last 10 minutes that nothing that happens over the next day, not even a black coyote or 10 black coyotes. Well, I won't go that far. 10 black coyotes would be pretty awesome, but not even a black coyote will 
make me feel like I feel right now. It's been 25 years at least before I've been over here. And as we're down here right now, I'm gonna pull the picture out and it's gonna be different because it was the winter time and things like that. But if I'm not mistaken, I caught that first rat about this far from where that hut used to be. And I would have caught that first rat when I was seven years old, probably within 10 feet of where I am right now, no more than 10 yards. Because that hut was up there. The picture with me on the ice is gonna be taken from about right here. And that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Actually, yeah, that's really cool. But, well, I come down here to make coyote sets, so we're gonna go down to the corner um, and make those, but that's where I caught my first muskrat that started this uh, craze that is still going strong almost 50 years later. So, thought I'd share that. Um, I remember I had just got my driver's license too. I used to drive my mom's Ford Escort down from that end of the field, down this edgeway, because even then I didn't want to walk it. And you know, you get rain or whatever. <laughs> I was in this little Ford Escort front wheel drive, wheels spinning, mud flying. I thought, uh, I thought I was. Charlton Heston or Robert Redford living the dream but just an awesome swamp any mink that is in this whole bottom here knows that this swamp is here and every one of them on their circuit is going to come into here well, there's a little trail there trail coming out of there it's not it's not being used right now but if we go in you can see something I don't know what that is that might be some chewings or something but pretty cool hey, but anyway getting back to where I was I caught that mink down here right before it goes under the road there's a culvert and i walked up on it big old male and he was alive going after me that was cool as cool can be and i was i was a bona fide trapper at that point bona fide I went home, I could have been prouder than I couldn't wait to show my dad that mink. He's like, where'd you get that? I said, down in the bottom. He was alive. I had to take care of him. But I'm actually gonna walk you over there. I don't wanna get long one, I don't wanna show you these sets, but I'm fired up right now. I wanna show you this. You can see there was water in here back in the day. Now it wasn't high like it was up above, but there was, you know, definitely a water system that came through here. And I came up on this pipe literally 40 years ago. Hell, half the pipe ain't even there now. And that mink, but as you can see, the pipe has all fallen off, it's disintegrated. You know, that mink was right here, sitting alive. And uh, I got his ass. But you can see they had a pipe here. There was water going through here, but you know, farm practices have changed and everything else has changed in the last 40 years, but. This is, uh, when I talk about the old stomping grounds, this is truly the old stomping grounds. Because as a crow flies, I only lived about half a mile 
up over there in the town. I could ride my bike down here after school, which I did. And I'm gonna give that story at some point here in the next couple days, where my dad cut my ass off trapping muskrats. You'll like that story. I'll probably make the next clip. But that right there, first mink, bam. It's not even a culvert anymore, it's a half a culvert. And then the first muskrat was right up there. And here we are, putting some sets in today and, you know, reminiscing about uh, those times. And so, I guess what I'm saying is, is the memories mean more than anything. You can catch 500 fox, you can catch 500 coyote. I don't care. That means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. You take a kid out and you uh, catch his first muskrat or coon or fox or whatever. They're gonna remember that. 40 years later. So, there's more traffic on that road there than I thought was gonna be, and I don't wanna put my sets, kinda of wanna put my sets up there about the halfway point where that tree juts out, and that little bit of uh, vegetation on the left as well, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna hide them right in here. The wind does blow that way right across so my sets are going to be all right here and i feel that anything that's working down through there is going to get a whiff and i don't think they're going to work right there the highway is just up over that hill and i think the highway keeps them in here so what i imagine is even if they're on that side they're going to actually come down and work up this side right here and that means they're gonna run right into my sets. So we'll get going here and put uh, three sets in and show you how that's done. Pretty awesome. Well, what we've got is three sets made now. You can see one there, two there, and three there. I've got them pounded in, I've got them set. I got the dirt holes made. And then now we're just going to uh, cover them up and put the bait in. Uh, this one here, we're gonna go with the bait pile. Um, it's uh, our beaver meat base. I didn't take the tape off, so we're gonna pop the, pop the lid on that. And we have the mountain man. And I won't even put my gloves back on, we'll just take the tape off of that. And you can see, I'll show you real quick here. These are the two differences in the bait. This is the mountain man. That's the uh, little bit of fat residue on top, but that's the uh, prairie dog base. That's that one. And then the bait pile is beaver based. And we're gonna put the bait pile in this one. We'll just uh, get a little bit of that. Right there, that's all we need. That's gonna go down in the hole. That's that one. Then we're gonna take the mountain man and we're gonna come over here with the mountain man. And you just gotta stir that up. And that fat, there's nothing wrong with that. That's gonna be a extra inviting presence to the critter. Get that prairie dog down in the hole there. I'll just add a, a little bit more. You can never overdo it with bait. You can with lure though. So remember with lure, a little dab will do you. With bait, you can go a little bit more and I'm gonna give them a, another little bit of bait right there. And that's all we need in that hole. And then the third one's not even gonna get bait. It's going to get our Johnny Thorpe Bad Medicine. And when you pop the top on this, you definitely know it. Oh, 
Yeah, that's good stuff. And then we're gonna take a little bit of that. You don't need much of this, I'm telling you. You just dip your stick in and a little bit is all you need right there. That's all I need of that bad medicine down in that hole. And you can see I hardly used any. And honestly, that is all you need. I can smell it coming out of there. And these sets are pretty much done now. Just going to get some wax sand. I'm gonna throw that in right there. Just a little bit over the top. Bring that over. And I might just take a little bit of dirt and mix it in with that over the top. That's good, and I'll just take a little bit of that grass and they're gonna smell that bait out of there anyway. I'll find my pan right there. And that set is done. And I don't really wanna do anything else to that. And if a predator or something comes in here, boom, gonna have him right there. Come over here, do the same thing. Gonna take a little bit of this duff, cover the bait. Black sand, bring that down over the pan. That's good. Take some dirt. A little bit more sand. Pan's right there. Good. And there ain't much else that needs to be done with that one. That one is good to go as well. And we'll come over to the third one in the triangle. Right here, same thing. Wax sand, a little bit more. Let's take some dirt. Crinkle that up, mix in with it, and pan. Take a little bit more dirt. And that's it. Those leaves don't bother. that out of the way, that out of the way, ruffle this back up. Find my pan again right there. Give him a place to step, the low spot. And that's what we want. That's good. I can smell that bad medicine coming out of there, I know that. Anyway, there's our Three sets, we got one there, one there, and one there. A little triangle, right on this point right here, right off the edge of this swamp. Any critter coming down along this field edge, run out along the middle over here, even this edgeway coming down, they're gonna work right into one of these three sets, so. I'm pretty excited. Well, we just got two in right here. I just put two in here, I'm gonna show you. This is where we've caught the bobcat. Uh, my dad caught three red foxes in there. I got a triple with cables one day. I actually caught that drowned red fox last year. He was soaked from being in the rain all night. And a couple years ago, we had a bobcat right here that we let go. But uh, I came in here, I got two sets in here. I really like these a lot, actually. I got one right here. Blends in nice. You can see it started to rain a little bit and it's got a little bit of wetness on it, but I really like that set there. And we've got another one right here. I really like that set. 
I like both of these. They're right in the middle of this thick cover, right on this edge. The wind's blowing this way right here, so the wind's going to take that scent all the way down through there when they're hunting out in there. So this set's going to be good for fox, bobcat, coyote, anything downwind. They're going to come in and maybe work both of these sets right here. And you can see how close I have them. They're about six feet apart, ready to go. This one's got... Uh, I actually put both in there. I did uh, bait pile and a little bit of Johnny Thorpe's Bad Medicine. And then the one on the right, we've got Mountain Man. And I gave it just a little squirt of the Leggett's uh, Coyote Fox Exciter. So I'm trying to keep track of what I'm using in the holes. But you can see how close they are. And you can see right where they are in accordance to the cover got the cornfield edge they're most likely not going to be running through the cornfield they're going to be coming up right along the edge if they are and if they're out in the middle hunting for rabbits mice whatever they're going to walk right into them so pretty cool got two in here i'm going to go right down here where i caught that wet red fox last year from the rain and i'm going to pound two more in uh, before the rain hits and it gets dark, but it's not supposed to rain a lot just enough to actually probably put a little Put a little bit of uh, my scent on the ground. So They won't uh, they won't be as leery of the sets. Hopefully, but pretty awesome Great day Out on the line here in the home turf Well, we've got Two more in down here. This is where I caught that red fox last year. That wet drowned rat that I showed. And we got one right here. You can see that set right along this edge. And I got another one about five feet, six feet away, right there. This one's got the bait pile, a little bit of Leggett's Coyote Exciter right on the edge. They run up through there, we're gonna have them. Going along with the two right up there where we caught the bobcat a couple years ago. My dad tripled up on red fox in there with cables one time. We showed gray fox caught here. A lot of critters running here and four good sets in, so. Pretty cool. We've got uh, a few sets in the ground today and Hopefully, uh, we'll show some action tomorrow. We're gonna get a lot more in tomorrow. As I said, I didn't get out here early enough today, but all in all, um, it's been a great day. I mean, every place I've been today is just a flood of memories. I mean, a flood of memories. Catching that triple here with my dad, him catching that and filming that just awesome gray foxes beavers coyotes bobcats we've caught pretty much everything here on this farm and it's it's just awesome you know I'm very fortunate to do what I've done over the years and have that library of footage with uh, with my father I mean I've got hours and hours and hours of footage and TV shows every every year we kick off with dad always because I wouldn't be where I'm at without him and today is uh, full of memories a lot of smiles and pretty good day and hopefully he's sitting up there and gonna put some predators in our traps tonight but just a beautiful area We've got four more in, two right up there on the kind of halfway point where that uh, little tree is on the left, and two right here where we caught the uh, wet red fox last year. So we'll be out checking tomorrow, and if we don't have nothing, that's fine because it's been a pretty damn good day anyway with uh, all the memories from years and years and years ago. So. We'll be back out here tomorrow, hopefully showing you that uh, our labor is paid off. As we sneak up along this creek, right there's that point. I just put those three dog proofs in over there, but I wanted to show you this route. 
Oh, there. A prime example of what I'm talking about. I can see it already. I can't tell what they are, but I don't want to get wet here, so I'm taking my time. And, yeah, I mean, you can literally see the tracks in there. Now, they're coon tracks there. And they've, you know, you can see how they have it padded down. It looks like there might be a... I don't know, that might not be a mink track, but I guarantee you those mink, every one of them that come by here is gonna be up under this root system. And you can see how they have it padded down here. Tracks going both ways. Now, like I said, they're coon tracks, but perfect spot if you had a little bit more water would be right there, right just off of that big rock. That would be where you want the trap. But if you find root systems like this or like that right there, I mean, you can see, actually, it looks like something has been digging a hole up under that tree over there, right at the base of it, the root. But you find those type of situations, fallen trees, put... Uh, you know, whatever you use them, one and a half double jaw or possibly a uh, number two Victor, you know, whatever you want to use. But you can see those animals, when they come down, they're running right along there. And I wasn't going to set this because, you know, I didn't think there was going to be a place for a coon but those coon tracks <laughs> i'm coming in to check those three over there you can bet your ass if i see those tracks that there's going to be a trap right here now the thing is a lot of people walk down here take pictures and things like that so i'm going to actually cable extension it down under i'm gonna put one trap here i'm gonna put one dp uh, i probably should put three or four but I'm going to put one. I'm going to put one DP right there and I'm going to cable extension it off to this uh, root system somehow. But we got three over there. We're going to have one here. And with those tracks and that sign, the tracks, the toilet, we're going to have some action here. I'm going to go out on limb and say we're going to have some action over the next couple days. But pretty awesome but yeah don't pass up those root systems the mink muskrat as well raccoons as you can see they're all going to use these and it rained last night so there's a good chance that coon came by there last night and he's probably going to come by again tonight and we're going to have him sitting there waiting for us tomorrow so i'm going to go get one and throw it in there the brand is so much bigger than myself or anybody involved with what we're doing. It's it's the tradition of, you know, it's that woodsmanship that these kids and, and, and even adults can learn just by being out there. That's what we're trying to do. Trying to get people involved, trying to get people to feel that. And every time you go out there with them, you're experiencing that outdoors through them. You know, we're showing the simplicity of things. And we're trying to debunk a lot of those myths that, that you know, maybe scares people away from doing it at times, thinking that, oh, it's just too hard, there's too much into it. No, it's pretty easy. And we're going to show you how easy it is, and you're going to be able to go out and do it. Get started trapping those problem animals and nest raiders today. Become the steward of your own land or lease. Visit NorthAmericanTrapper.com.